Good morning, everybody. Just getting up here. A little later than I wanted to. The sun's already up in the sky. We have this wide load behind us, with 10 foot wide. And I can only drive during daylight hours. So I can drive until approximately 6.30 tonight. Gives us a little over 10 hours of driving. You squeaking your toy over there, Diesel? You wanna say good morning to the good people? Say good morning. Morning, everybody. Morning. Nice to see you again. Jeez, always look at them when you're talking to them. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. That fuzzy thing scares me. What, the mic? It's just a mic, Diesel. You don't have to be afraid. Diesel, you ready to go? Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Let's get out of here. So today's adventure starts at uh, King's On Road. It's a rest area just north of the city of Toronto on your way up towards Barrie. I want to get all the way up to Hearst tonight. Hearst, Ontario. That means we're going to be taking Highway 11. I've got 65,000 pounds of steel on the triaxle trailer behind me. Uh, so that's why I want to take 11 because there's less hills and less traffic. I was telling you last time though that it's uh, sort of a trade-off. Highway 11 is a little more risky, especially in the winter time because it's a little more secluded and not many uh, places to stop. There's also not very many passing lanes. So if you get stuck behind a slow person and you're too heavy to pass them or not, don't have enough speed or momentum to pass them, you're just stuck behind them. Too bad. So we'll see what today brings. It should be fun. on a windshield this month. That's awesome. I stop for some Timmy's. I get back in my truck and this is waiting for me. I mean, there was a little chip at the bottom there and a little crack already at the bottom that I was going to get fixed, but now it's across the whole window. Now I can't wait. Now I'm going to have to get this fixed as soon as I get home. 
Uh, so as soon as I know when I'll be home, uh, it'll be after this trip, I'll make an appointment with the shop and get this whole window replaced. It's, I think it's at least around $400. And you want to know why it cracked? I had a stone chip in my window because there was a gravel truck in front of me at one point in Alberta. Actually, I think it was an oil field truck who had rocks all in his tires. And when he went in front of me, he started throwing rocks at me. So I had to slam on my brakes and two of them got my windshield. One of those created this crack here now that is fantastic so i know my comment section is all just gonna be you got a crack truck josh truck josh there's a crack on your windshield truck josh there's a crack so I, I see it there i'm acknowledging your comments already i see it there's a crack in my windshield it's getting fixed asap and this guy just turned in front of me just to slow down why why would you do that why I want to know. I'm already grumpy now. I got a crack in my window. What a day. What a day. We're in North Bay, Ontario now. The bad thing, or one of the bad things about Volvo trucks is that they have one windshield across the entire thing. They don't have a, a, a bar or a pillar in the middle, which most trucks nowadays have, I guess. They, they, they have the single windshield. Older trucks, they used to have the pillar in the middle, right? And then they'd have two separate windows. That way, if one window got cracked, you didn't have to replace the whole thing. You just replace the one that's cracked. But then again, if both cracked, then you gotta replace both of them. <laughs> Pros and cons, I guess. So now I gotta get this whole thing replaced. I should be home, I'm thinking, on Thursday. Wednesday night or Thursday. So I'll make the appointment to get the windshield replaced on Friday. Bummer. What is this plow doing besides wasting money and fuel? This is the third snow plow within a half mile of each other. There's two more behind me yet, going the same way. Look at the road. What are they doing? What are they plowing? They're not salting. They're just pushing nothing. What a waste. What a waste. This is Teganami, Ontario. Temag... What is it? I'm looking at their water tower over there. Temagami. Temagami. Temagami? Temagami. They sure got a lot more snow up here than they do down near Toronto, that's for sure. I heard it's still pretty cold out west. But believe me, it's going to start warming up soon. It's been a little colder winter than... Or the, the cold has held on a little longer this year than it did the past couple of years. But it's been... It's held on for longer in the past, we'll say that. Nothing unusual about it. It's just very inconvenient and it sort of sucks to have it so cold in March because we want spring already. I'm kind of tired of winter. Like, uh, It's beautiful seeing all this white snow everywhere, but it gets old after a while. It gets old pretty quick. If snow wasn't cold, I think it would be way better. If there was a way that we could just have warm snow, I'd be alright with that. And if we could have all heated highways so that they just turn on the heat whenever it's snowing and all the snow just melts off. They wouldn't need plows anymore, or very few. I know, I'm a genius, you just didn't know it yet. I know, heated roadways. I don't know, how are we gonna pay for that? I don't know, we'll ask that Cortez chick from the States. She seems to think money grows on trees. We'll just go ask her where she's gonna get all her money from for all her plans. She's not worried about money. Why should we be worried about money? Look at this guy, give her. Look at him. Look at him go. That's right, everybody, get past me. 
spray me with your water. I did buy extra washer fluid. When you come through Northern Ontario or when you go through uh, British Columbia in the winter, you gotta have lots of washer fluid with you. Because of exactly this. Well, I've had three vehicles going the opposite way flashing their lights at me, so that means there is a cop around here taking pictures. Pointing his radar gun my way. At least I think so. Either that or maybe there's some wildlife on the road or there's an accident up ahead. But Everybody's flashing their lights for something. Where are you? Where are you? Come on. Maybe just over this hill? I know you're here somewhere. I'm guessing it's probably a cop sitting somewhere around the corner with his radar gun out. You know, it's not really the best thing to warn people. Oh yeah, it's a cop right here, I see. Ah, that's why. Because he's on the road. All right, we're slowly gonna go around him. people about things like that but if there's a cop sitting out here radaring people for speeding I would recommend you don't warn drivers just let them get the speeding ticket if they're speeding that's their own problem let the cop pull them over the main reason for that is you never know if they're looking for somebody you never know if maybe there's a kidnapper in that car that you're warning that there's a cop up ahead. There could be a kidnapper with a kidnapped kid in that vehicle. And the only way that that kid is going to get saved is if that police officer catches the driver speeding and pulls him over. Right, that might be the only chance of that kid getting saved. There might be a criminal, might be a stolen vehicle. They might have just committed a, a robbery or murdered someone and the, the, the license plates are in the system, and as soon as the cop runs the license plates, boom, they arrest him. However, if you warn the guy that there's a cop up ahead with his radar gun out, he's gonna slow down and that cop is never gonna pull him over. And if there's a kidnapped kid in that vehicle, that kid might never get saved, or could have been saved there. And now he's not, because of you. So for me, I never warn people that there's police up ahead. Now, if you're speeding, that's your problem. Cops are there for a reason. They're trying to catch people. Don't break the law and you got nothing to worry about. The reason I use that as an example is that if it is actually a kidnapper with a kidnapped kid with him or her, or if it is criminals that just committed a crime, chances are they're in a hurry to get away from the crime scene or in a hurry to get to where they're going. Right? They might be, they'll, they're most likely gonna be speeding to get there. And like I said, if I warn them that there's a cop up ahead, they're gonna slow down and no one's ever gonna catch them. Or chances are that they're not gonna get caught. Just let them, let them pull them over. As much as I really don't like winter that much, it sure does make Northern Ontario beautiful. Like one day they are going to actually build a four lane highway through here. It'll probably be in about 300 years, but eventually they're gonna build a four lane highway through here. And you know, it's gonna be sad to uh, say goodbye to these old original routes. You know, this is sort of like our Route 66, sort of. These old two lane highways. The four lane through British Columbia is gonna be completed in the next decade or so. Maybe, it might take 100 years, who knows. But then that two-lane road is gone too, and it's all four-lane, which will make it a lot safer and a lot better. I'm saying that's a good thing. And I hope that they leave the old route there, you know, just the, the scenic route. Can you see that big crack in my window from here? It's going all the way up there. I gotta clean my, clean my windows off here. 
Just editing up today's vlog. Diesel is passed out. Oh, no, no, his eyes are open. There you go, bud. Just finished editing how many videos here? Oh, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, plus this one, six. I just edited six videos. Yikes. Diesel, hardcore. <laughs> We're here at the Flying J in Kappa's casing. We've been here for, how long does this thing say we've been here for? Four hours and 13 minutes, not bad. Six vlogs in four hours. There we go, guys. I gotta shut it down here. Well, I had to shut it down here because the sun go, went down. So uh, we'll be starting as soon as the sun comes up in the morning again. At least we have really good internet here so I can upload some videos overnight. Take care, everybody. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button below the video. Hit that bell beside it so you get notifications when I upload because you might not be notified if you don't. If you do that for me, you get a thumbs up from me. And if you give a thumbs up back to me in this video, hey, we're, we're thumbs up buddies, I guess. You can give a thumbs down on the video too if you want. Really doesn't bother me because whether you give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, it helps me with the algorithms with YouTube because that means you're engaging with my video. So it does exactly the same thing. So if you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you hated my video, give it the thumbs down button. And I'll see you tomorrow for another one.